One question I get asked a lot is, what is the European Union? My preferred analysis of what the European Union is, is that it is a confederation of states. It's, it's a looser form of federalism. There is no European Union government. There are governing institutions, but they don't constitute a European government in the same way as the institutions in Washington, D.C. do. Uh, there is no constitution. There are treaties. But legally, treaties have a different uh, standing from constitutions. Um, and then primarily, it is intergovernmental. It involves governments working together and negotiating with each other than supranational existing above the level of the member states. Now, in terms of what it does, um, you have to look at different policy areas to interpret what the European Union actually does. There are only five policy areas where the European Union has what is called competence, which means essentially control of, over those policy areas. Uh, trade, agriculture, and competition are three of the big ones. And then within the Eurozone, um, monetary policy. And then since the Eurozone crisis, increasingly a pressure for the European Union or the, the Eurozone to have more competence over uh, fiscal policy as well. In terms of the significance for the United States, this is absolutely the most important international political, economic, and monetary relationship in the world by size, by political significance, by reach, by every measure that you can bring to bear on this. Um, the United States and the European Union together are the, the biggest economies, accounting for just over half of global gross domestic product. Um, they control the biggest shares of world trade, about one-third. They're the biggest investors in each other. And they have the biggest and the most advanced militaries. Among them, they account for 75% of uh, global spending. Now, of course, the United States has a united military, whereas the Europeans have 28 separate militaries. And they're not always been entirely effective at bringing them together. But if you add up the military establishments and the military budgets of those 28 countries, it's really quite substantial. Um, the two partners have uh, common political and economic values and goals. We both sides believe in democracy and capitalism. We have sometimes different interpretations of what democracy and capitalism mean, but essentially we're on the same page. We are each other's most reliable allies. Uh, whenever one is in trouble, globally, it always looks to the other one first before moving on. This is, we can see this happening in Ukraine at the moment, for example. Uh, the euro, in spite of all of its problems, is the only global currency uh, with a standing that is equal to the US dollar. Before the eurozone broke in the good old days, there was a lot of speculation that the euro might actually replace the US dollar as the world's preferred uh, currency. That, that discussion has been put on hold, obviously, recently. But we may see uh, some further discussion about this at some point in the future. Um, so if the European Union sneezes, the US catches cold and vice versa. This is a very, very important relationship and a, a relationship with very, very strong ties at every level.